Hi there, I'm Kathleen McGivern and this is 5 Steps to Success as a Self-Taught Artist. So make sure that you grab a pen and paper and let's dive into this episode and let's get our inspired. Number one is to uh, make lots of art. So the first step in success towards being a self-taught artist is to just practice making a lot of art. It's really important that you get a lot of experience creating. Um, you're gonna wanna experiment with lots of different materials and mediums to try to figure out which one speaks to you or perhaps a few um, really pique your interests and then figure out, I mean, for example, like you might not know that you like working with charcoal if you don't go work with charcoal for a while, not just one drawing, but like work with it and, and see what happens. Um, or oil paints, if you never tried it, go out there and try it and just see what happens. You might really enjoy it. Whatever the medium is, just try different things and experiment. It's very important to experiment with lots of different mediums, but also with different styles and techniques. And then also get experience working on making lots and lots and lots of art. It's the only way to improve your skills uh, and techniques and get a clear vision for what you wanna do. So it is very essential that as a self-taught artist that you get out there and just make a lot of art. There's, that is the only way it to, to get better is to put in the time and hard work and effort and your goal for every single arc is to do 1% better. That way you're going to improve. With every single arc you're going to get 1% better but having a clear vision for what your art is going to be. Like an overall uh, a focus or vision for a series, right? We don't want to throw everything at it, right? We don't want to jump around, right? We want to have freedom. Freedom is good, creative expression is good, but a little structure is nice, but otherwise people are gonna get confused when they look at it. And number two is to seek out learning resources. I highly suggest seeking out uh, online workshops. Um, lots of artists have their own websites where you can sign up for online workshops or courses and learn skills taught by them. They'll do demonstrations. You don't have to actually go to in-person events right? You can learn from watching their uh, videos on an online workshop or course. So there's an artist that you really like. I, sorry, I have an eyelash. Uh, I really suggest that you look into their website and they might hopefully have, uh, I suggest looking up artist websites and just seeing if they even offer courses or workshops online. That's a really great way to get um, hands-on experience or watch um, how somebody does things so that way you can get better, right? It's an easy way to get um, more inspiration and then also learn new techniques and skills to help you progress um, to success as a self-taught artist, right? Helping you get better. Um, I love going to conferences, symposiums, watching artist demonstrations or going to artist talks to help me get better. Even if it's not something that's like something that I'm doing, like I don't wheel throw all the time, but I'll go to like a wheel throwing workshop and just learn some new skills or just watch artist demonstrations uh, at a symposium for a day. Um, and then that just helps inform my work or I'll just pick up some things and I might be able to add to it and, or just inspires me to try something and take a little piece of those techniques but apply it to my own art. And I think that's really a great way to expand your learning. Another way to expand your learning is to um, get books on art, so on creativity, uh, on our careers or our inspiration. Um, I think that's a really good way is to improve is to read a lot of books. Yeah, read a lot of books. Now, if you're looking for some suggestions or recommendations for books to read, I love The Creative Act by uh, Rick Rubin, for example. Um, but you can find a, bunch, a list of books to read for artists in the um, description below this video, all my recommendations. They are Amazon affiliate links. That means that I do get a commission if you purchase any of those just letting you know, um, but I do highly recommend them and I've read them all myself, um, which is why they're on my recommended list. Um, and I think that they are worth your time reading. So make sure you check them out in the link below the description. Another way to get improvement is to have uh, more of a formal education. Um, if you want to ever switch from being that self-taught to being a taught artist, 
Um, you can always look at getting either post-secondary education or just taking single courses down the road to help you. Um, but a lot of things are going to be uh, learned through going to artist demonstrations, artist talks, going to gallery openings, and reading books. A lot of a lot of universities like that anyways. They're being taught by people who are artists. They're doing demonstrations for you. And then they're going to recommend that you read books. And they're going to give you a list of recommended readings. Trust me, I went to art school. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I got, wait, I got, I got more than one degree and that's, that's what it is. Um, so I, that's my <laughs> recommendation to you is to read those books in the description. Um, or check them out, get inspired, or find some books that inspire you on your own as well. You can do that too. You don't have. You can read read what makes what inspires you. Number three is to experiment. It is super important to experiment. Uh, I never did this enough in my younger years as an artist, but now uh, that I'm older uh, and more experienced, I realize that it is so important <laughs> to experiment. Number one, who cares if you fail? I used to get super worked up if I failed. I had a sculpture be knocked off a gallery wall one time onto a cement floor. Also had one get knocked off a plinth onto a floor and they broke and that was like the world ended for me for like months. Um, but I, learned, I knew it in hindsight, I like learned from those experiences, right? One, um, you can make it again. Number two, life happens. Number three, your older work is going to look older eventually. So, eh, it's fine, <laughs> right? Eventually, that those new pieces will become older pieces for you because you'll get better if you keep creating. Um, number, you know, uh, if you fail, you can use these moments of failure for opportunities to learn, right? So you're going to get better. You can use moments of failure as opportunities for growth, right? So you can either see them as failures and you can be negative about it, get stuck and that's it. Oh, I'm done, shut down. Or I can say, you know what? I actually can learn from this mistake, right? This is growth mindset. I can learn from this mistake and I will have learned so many things. I'll know not what to do. Uh, I'll know what to do instead. Um, and I'll have new approaches to these problems. Um, you'll develop your own techniques and skills from failing miserably. It's great if you think about it that way, right? Because now you'll you'll have so much more information in your tool belt. Um, so really think about that. And also experimenting is going to, um, with either different mediums and materials, or even within your own medium, just trying new things, just spending days, just like doing play-based learning for yourself, just experimenting, okay? Today, my focus is not to work on an artwork, but to just experiment. Experiment how uh, I can make different marks. Experiment how using different tools makes different marks. Experimenting uh, how I can do mixed media processes within my medium. Um, experimenting just creating different color palettes. Experimenting with different color combinations. Just experimenting is going to give you time to uh, focus on developing your own new techniques and skills and then also help you with developing your own style and then also to help helping you develop um, just more of a clear vision and it's also going to inform when you come back to making those artworks inform those artworks themselves all right i do have a question for you you can answer in the comment section below do you have any suggestions to add to this list for people who are interested in being um, finding success as self-taught artists make sure you pop those answers in the description below the video so that way um, others can, we can all learn from each other and also create connections and get inspired and really build on what I'm talking about today. So for more information or ideas, you can also look down in the comments section below, but be sure to add your own answer there. All right, so number four, your next step into towards um, success as a self-taught artist is to open up your own website and claim your social media platforms. So now you're going to develop a website. That is really easy nowadays. You don't have to code anything. I work recommend just setting up a WordPress website. A lot of people uh, recommend other ones, um, but WordPress is pretty easy to use and also it's a little bit more versatile. Uh, you can also sell off of WordPress if you want to. Um, it looks very professional and clean. You can do a lot of integrations and plugins. Um, so I think I really recommend that. Um, there's no affiliates with that. I just, I, per, I have used other ones and I have switched to WordPress. 
um, in the hindsight. So that's just what I prefer to use now. I've done so many of the other ones and I don't find that they're as easy. Um, WordPress is a little harder to get going on, but then I think it looks a lot more clean and professional at the end of the day. Um, and then, so what things you want to have on your website are your port, your, it's going to be your portfolio. Back in the day, before websites were a thing, people used to take images of their art or their art, um, like they would take uh, slides of their art and then they would take images of their art to galleries with their CV and stuff like that to present them um, with things that they could show. Now it's galleries want to see your website, right? So you're going to need to have your website or just images. Um, you'll have to have them professionally done or you can do them yourself and I'll have a video for that eventually. Um, but um, you'll want to have your images on there, right? Separated by series. Uh, and you want to have on your images like the scale, the mediums used and um, dim yeah, dimensions. Um, year it was created, all that title uh, all on there. Um, and then you'll want to also have your artist CV. So listing off like gallery shows that you've been in, any publications, any contests, things that you've won. Um, even publications online, if people have done blog posts or writing articles about you, either in newspapers or online, and make sure you link to them. And then you'll also want any education will go on there as well. Uh, if you have any and then you'll also want to add your artist statement and artist biography on your website so that is going to be your portfolio and it's going to be an online version you'll want to have your images saved uh, on a folder as well all this on a folder as well because sometimes when you do submissions um, they'll either want to have your website or they'll want to have your images and CV and bio and statement all uploaded as separate documents or they want both why I don't know but that's just sometimes how it is um, so you'll want to have that as your next step. Oh, and you're going to also want to set up social media. So I would just claim, even if you're not going to do social media, I would just claim your social media accounts. So don't have it the same as your personal accounts because do you think about it as a professional portfolio. So does your images, silly images of your cat really resonate with your artist bio? I don't think so. So <laughs> think about it more as a professional social media account that is separate from your personal one. So just claim, like do your name with the word art or whatever it is on there, whatever you want to claim as your username, have the same username across all platforms. That makes it really easy for sharing. And then uh, just claim them all, even if you're not going to use them right now. Um, that's a suggestion to you. Next step, your final step as a self-taught artist in your your steps to success is to apply for a gallery show. Um, so you want to look for calls to artists um, for your local area. Um, look up your different galleries in your area, see if they have any calls to artists posted on their website. Um, these will be for shows. These are generally for group shows. And then after a while, one day you might be invited to have a a dual show or a private group show or maybe even um, a solo show if you ever get to that level. So that's your next step is to look for different contests or um, gallery exhibitions and apply for calls to artists and get into a gallery show. And that is your absolute next step in the whole journey, my friends. So exciting. So that's what you're really working towards is getting into those gallery shows. And that is your success to being an artist. And then after you get your first one, do the same process to get your second one. Just keep applying and trying to get into as many as possible. And that's going to help you build your CV and help you um, really gain success as a self-taught artist. All right, my friend, that's it for this episode. Your next video to watch is five reasons your art is bad. Please make sure you find that video by clicking the link above or in the description and below in the video. Remember to check out my links below for all my recommendations as well. Um, and also uh, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel and help me get to my next milestone which is 1,000 subscribers. At 1,000 subscribers, I'm going to create a artwork and acrylic painting of a man eating cupcake. And then at 10,000 subscribers, I'll do an oil painting of an acrylic, sorry, of a cupcake out of this world. And at 100,000 subscribers, I'm going to do a ceramic sculpture of a cupcake. And you get to help me come up with a theme for that. 
So please make sure you subscribe to this channel and share it and help me get to those milestones. Well, that's it for this episode and I'll see you in the next one.